What's up guys, Teres Kozdin here. Welcome to the last use deferred value tutorial video you're ever going to have to watch. I promise you, if you watch this video and you watch it until the end, you're never going to have to watch another video on this ever again, and you just might become a senior React developer. All right, cool, let's begin. So we have this application here in front of us and there is a problem. We have here the search input and then we have all of these components here, which are supposed to render everything that I type in the input. So let's test this out. Let me write my name. So I'll do Darius. And then you're gonna see that immediately something is off. It's very slow, right? Let me just refresh and try this again. I'm gonna write my name again, Darius. Again, I type and the input is not responding as fast as I'm typing and worse, all of these components that are rendering are extremely slow. So what's going on? Well, let's look at the code that is running this entire app to see if we can figure out what the problem might actually be. So this is the main component that we have. We have here this one piece of state called query, which is getting passed here to this input as its value. And then on change, we have a function that will update the query. Then right below, we have the slow list component that receives the query as its prop. So let's now open slow list to see what's going on there. And now you can clearly see the problem. We have slow list here, which renders 250 of these slow item components. And each one of the slow item components is artificially slowed down to simulate slow code. What it does is it basically waits for one millisecond before rendering. And when you combine that with the fact that you have 250 of them, you're going to get some very, very slow code. So what's happening is that every time that this query is getting updated through this input, which is every single time that I type a keystroke, this slow list is going to receive a new query and it's going to re-render all of these components, which as we've seen is extremely slow. So in the app, this is what it looks like. I type one letter and I have to wait for all of these components to render, which is really, really slow. If I type more than one letter, it's going to hang because the slowness of the components makes the entire UI unresponsive. And this is a problem, right? Like you don't want to ship an application in production that has performance like this. We need to fix it. Now, there are multiple ways that you could approach fixing this problem. The way that I'm going to show you in this video is using use deferred value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hook, fix the problem, and then explain to you what is actually going on. So the first thing that we need to do is import the hook. So I'll do use deferred value here from React. It's a native hook from React, which is great. We can just import it. And then below our use state hook, I'm going to create const deferred query equals use deferred value. And then I'm going to pass it query. Then over here where we have our slowest component, we are going to remove query and give it deferred query. And I'm going to save and see how our application behaves. Let's now try to type our name again. So I'll come here, Darius. And then as you can see, the input was very responsive. I was able to type my name completely without any interruption. But if you're fast enough, you would have noticed that these components that are supposed to render out every single value that I have only rendered once with the complete name. They never rendered in between. Let me show you again and I'll pay close attention to how this updates whenever I type my full name. So I'm going to refresh and then I'm going to type Darius again. And as you can see, as I'm typing, nothing is being rendered until I finish typing and then we get the full render with my complete name. So what's going on here? Well, first we have to realize that we fixed our performance problems, right? Like this input is now fully responsive and I was able to type everything without having the entire UI freeze on me and become unresponsive. Now it's very important to understand that we didn't actually fix the slowness of our components. If I go back here to slow list, you're going to see that the code is unchanged. We weren't supposed to fix this. On the other hand, what we did is that we made our app work with the slowness of our components. So instead of making all of these components render faster, we actually actually prioritize the rendering of our input because that's what we as a user care about the most. And the way that we did that is by using the use deferred value hook. Now the way that this hook works, and this is very important, so listen up, is that it takes in a value, in this case we gave it query, right, which is a string, and then it will return to us a new value, a deferred value that we call the deferred query, that is going to be identical to query with the only difference is that it will lag behind. Deferred query is not guaranteed to be the same value as query in every single render. And the way that I can best show this to you is by creating a use effect here and logging some things to the console so that you can understand what's actually going on. So I'm going to do use effect. I'm going to import this from React. I'm going to create an arrow function here and then provide it the dependency array. And here I'm going to do console.log. I'm going to log query. And I'm also going to log console.log deferred query. And I'm also going to log something here, console.log end of render 
just so that we have a visual representation in the console when each render is starting and ending. And then the last thing that we need to do is just provide query here and then deferred query so that our use effect is complete. So now that we have our logs in place, let's go into the application and see what's actually going on. So I'm gonna go here in the application, do a fresh restart so we have a clean slate, open up the console. And the first thing that you're gonna see is that, actually, let me just make a quick change. Let me default this to test, just so that it's easier to kind of see what's actually going on. We're gonna give this a default value that is not going to have any other impact besides making it easier for us to see the default value, as you can see here. So here, I did a fresh refresh, right? In case you missed it, I'm gonna do it again. And we have something that is rendered immediately. This is the first render of this component. I didn't change anything. I didn't trigger any other render. This is the first ever time that this component rendered. And what we have here is we have query, which is test, right? This is what we expect. Our current value is test, so our query is going to be test. And then we have deferred query, which is also test. Now, this is very important. Whenever you're using use deferred value, the deferred value, in our case, deferred query, is always going to be equal to the initial value, in our case, query, on the first render. So on the first render, the deferred value and the original value are always going to be equal. So now let's see what happens when I add one letter to our input. I'm just going to add one letter and that is going to be the letter E. So I'm going to press E and then see what happens in our console. So we have two renders, which is interesting because we only pressed the key once. So theoretically, we should have only had one render, but instead we got two. If you look here at the renders, we have here our second render, which logs the query as test E, which is correct. It's exactly what we expect. The current value is test E, so the query has to be test E. But then our deferred query is only test. And here is where you can clearly see what I meant when I said that the deferred value is not always guaranteed to be the same value as the original value. This is what it means for the value to lag behind. What happened here is that when we typed E, we got a new render, which rendered the query with test E, but deferred query was still lagging behind. What use deferred value does is when that happens, when there's a re-render of that value, it's going to then schedule a background render to eventually sync up the deferred value with the original value. So that's why we have here an extra render that we did not trigger. Remember, we only pressed the key once, so we should have gotten only one render. But because we used use deferred value, it scheduled an extra render that is in the background and that more importantly is also interruptible. So if you look here at the render, we have query, which is test E, that is the same value that we had here when we initially updated it. But now the third query has caught up and is now in sync again with the original value. And that's the reason why in our components here, we now see test E. This is the same value as our input. And if I go back to the code, just to refresh a little bit, we did pass the third query to our slow list. So the value that you're seeing here is the deferred value. And the value that you're seeing here is the current value. Let me now refresh and see what happens if I type two letters very quickly. So I'm going to do EE very quickly. And now, interestingly enough, we have four renders. So we have the same render that we had before, our initial render in which the original value and the deferred value are going to be equal. Then we have our second render, which is when I type the first time the E, we have query, which is test E, and then deferred query is test. This is exactly what we've seen before. Then we have another render in which query is test EE, -E, right? It accounts for both of the E's that I pressed, but the third query is still test. That is because the background renders that use deferred value does are, first of all, in the background, so you don't actually trigger them, you don't see them. But second of all, very importantly, they are interruptible. If something else happens before the background render has had a chance to finish rendering, it's going to interrupt that render, react, the hook is going to interrupt the render and schedule a new one with the updated value. In our case, that is test EE, which you can see here, we have another render, an extra render. This is our fourth render. And this one has test EE, the same query as we had before, but then the third query is eventually synced up. So that's what I said when I meant that this deferred query lags behind. It's not guaranteed to be up to date every single render, but eventually in the end, it will always catch up. That's why I can type as much as I want and nothing is going to happen in the bottom part here. No component is going to be rendered until I stop and then use the third value is going to schedule the last re-render and it's eventually going to catch up. And as you can see here, now that we have proper logs, every time that our component we render, our deferred value was always test E. Every single background render that it tried to do to eventually sync up the values has been interrupted because we were typing faster than it could do its render. 
But as we've said, eventually on the last render, when we stop typing, which means when there's no more updates that have to interrupt the render, it can complete the render and it can sync up the values. You can see here that both of them are equal to the same thing. And obviously in the UI, you can see that both of them are also equal to the same thing. This is the power of use deferred value. This is a hook that you're probably not going to use that often in your components, but it's very useful when you have something like this, where you want to prioritize certain renders before other renders. Now, one thing that is very important that you know and understand when working with use deferred value is that the value that you give it has to be a primitive, which means it has to be either a Boolean, a string or a number. You cannot give this an array or an object unless the array or the object is defined outside of the component because as we know in React, arrays and object, they are different every single render and this will actually cause an infinite loop. So for example, if instead of query, I gave it an object which has query and I save this, go back to our application, you're going to see that we now have an infinite loop. The reason we have this, and let me just remove this now to just put it back how it was before. The reason we have this is that if you give it an object or an array, every single render, that object or array is going to be different, which means that use deferred value is going to schedule a background render, which is going to cause a re-render that's going to cause a different object or an array again. And that's going to cause an infinite number of background renders, which is why we have an infinite loop. So always pass this a primitive value, a Boolean, a string or a number, or if you have to pass it an object or an array, make sure that that object or array is defined outside of the component so that this way they will be stable references. So there you go, guys, that was used the third value. I promised you if you watched this video and you watched it until the end, you would not have to watch another video on this ever again and you're now officially a senior react developer if you enjoyed this video you can click here to subscribe i would really appreciate it it would help me out a ton if you want to see more videos like these you can click here i'm sure this one is super awesome and with that being said my name has been Darius cousin this is cousin solutions thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video ciao ciao